There's a new documentary in town. It's called Make Me Famous. So this is about a San Francisco Art Institute graduate who eventually moves to New York City in the early 80s. He's trying to make it in the art world, and then eventually he disappears. I love that it's called Make Me Famous, and now he finally might be because of this movie made by these two filmmakers who are joining us in studio, Heather Spore and Brian Vincent. Great to see both of you. It's great Thanks for having us. Okay, so Heather, we just heard about this whole debate about whether or not this artist is even dead, well, right? right. <laughs> so that, that becomes kind of the mystery at the end, but let's, we'll get there. Let's start in the beginning. Who is this guy? Edward Brzezinski was a, a, an artist who just wanted to create. He was a SFAI graduate in 1977, and he moved to New York in the early 80s. And he just did everything he could to promote and to, to be, become an artist. But he's working along people like Basquiat and Keith Haring. And, um, you know, there was just thousands of artists um, on the Lower East Side they were creating their own ecosystem of galleries and uh, he was one of those artists and he's one that we haven't heard of which is like is the whole point of the movie i guess so so brian it's not we haven't heard of them he's not a household name but it's not as if he didn't have fans oh he had a, a lot of fans uh within the community itself uh, edward showed up at everybody's uh openings as well but usually to hand out cards for about him, his own shows <laughs> which is kind of a no-no right i mean not exactly you know <laughs> the Ed etiquette that most right. people are using edward was pretty good at doing the things you're not really supposed to do um, you know, one of the things he got famous for was uh, vandalizing another artist's artwork. Um, and basically, that's a big part of the film. And that's the donut thing, right? Right. He ate uh, an, a donut, basically, that an artist had made as, as an art piece. And, um, and that's sort of what he got famous from. Uh, but when we looked into his background, that was pretty much all you could find out about him, other than he was collected at the Brooklyn Museum uh, in permanent collection. So why do we care about this guy if he isn't famous? Well, this is a perfect archetype to look at this very popular art scene in New York City. It was a time when it was, you know, New, New York was desolate. It's like porn shops next to Broadway theaters, which have been turned into porn shops. Yes. And nothing's been cleaned up. There's no Disney store. Yes, and the artists all convened in this really inexpensive place, and they were working alongside of each other and having art openings every night. They created this whole, this whole happening down on the East Village. So why are we not sure if he's dead? <laughs> What's that whole thing? Well, because Edward was uh, sort of a rascal, um, and you, you really don't know, um, the, uh, there's a lot of peeled uh, layers on, on his uh, onion of his life. Um, but we, um, there's an obituary for him, but when we looked on the master death file, he's not there. And so that meant we needed to find out why, why not. And so part of the movie is investigating that. Um, also, Edward was very forward-thinking. Uh, he filmed himself. He, he, had, he worked with another guy. His name is Jim C. And they videotaped his openings um, that he uh, had in his fourth-floor walk-up apartment in New York City. And people would visit there, like Basquiat. You'll see him stop by. Um, get, uh, other famous poets, like Miguel Pinero, performing there. Uh, but he filmed these. He had these this made. So that's why the audience can experience the 1980s scene, uh, because he, he thought about doing that. But the other artists, they all wondered when we couldn't find him on the Master Death File, if maybe he hadn't uh, faked his death and no one had noticed. <laughs> Try to raise his prices, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I mean, it is interesting because now we live in a totally different era of media. And so had the 80s been now, he could have very well been famous through Instagram or TikTok. 100%. The donut thing probably would have gone viral. Yes. Right? <laughs> did you think no of that question. while you were making this film? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I did. I mean, and it sort of did go viral back then because it was on page six, which was, you know, New York Post massive thing. And they did this big, giant article on Edward eating the donut. And part of it had to do with um, the fact that conceptual art was now taking over from the, art, from the painters. And so they used this very, in, uh, this, this hilarious incident to kind of uh, ask big questions about where the art world's going. Interesting. Okay, so how can people see this film? We are premiering in um, the Bay Area 
on Thursday, the 19th, at the Four Star Theater, and we'll be there for a Q&A, and then we run through November 3rd, um, periodically during the week, at the Four Star Theater. So you can come check it out on their website and um, see when we're playing. Nice. Okay, so go see Make Me Famous. So great to talk to both of you about this. A labor of love that's been going on since, you say, 2012? 2012 right. okay. is when we picked it up. <laughs> You'll be enveloped in the downtown art scene. You'll be feeling like what it was really like to be an artist back then. I love that. Down and dirty. Yes. In the old New York City. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here.